Hello, everyone. Welcome to TDWI's webinar program. I'm Linda Briggs. I'm a contributing editor here at TDWI, and I'll be today's moderator. Our webinar is entitled Text, Text Everywhere, Considerations for Gaining Insight from Text. And we have something planned a little different for you today. Our presentation is a panel discussion. It's going to be led by Fern Helper, who is TDWI's Research Director for Advanced Analytics. We have three sponsors for today's webinar, and these are also sponsors of the report, also by Fern Helper, that today's presentation is based around. And we'll tell you more about how to download that report in just a moment. Our sponsors today are Angus Software, Lexalytics, and SAS. Before we get started with the presentation, let me go over a few background items with the audience. Our webinar today will last about an hour, including a Q&A with the audience at the end of the panel discussion. So please, at any time during the presentation, if you have a question for any of our speakers, go ahead and type it in there on your console and send it over. If you run into any technical issues at any point, there is a help area below your slide window. You can click on that for assistance. If you'd like to download a copy of today's slides immediately as a PDF, you can do that. There's a link on your console for that. And to discuss this webinar on Twitter with some of your fellow attendees, the hashtag is TDWI. Finally, we are recording today's broadcast, and we'll be emailing each of you a link to the archived version of the webinar. We uh, encourage you to share that with colleagues if you'd like to do that. OK, again, our program today is entitled Text, Text Everywhere, Considerations for Gaining Insight from Text. Leading our panel discussion today is Fern Helper. Fern is TDWI's Director of Research for Advanced Analytics. Fern is a highly recognized expert in the field of analytics and was one of the first analysts to write about text analytics. She has more than 20 years of experience in data, data and business analysis, has published hundreds of reports and articles on data mining and information technology, and is frequently quoted on that subject in the press. She's also co-authored several books, including her newest, Big Data for Dummies. Joining us from Angus Software is Michelle Corsano. Michelle leads Angus's global marketing operations. She has over 15 years of experience leading marketing initiatives for enterprise technology and software companies such as Cyperion, Algorithmics, Novell Canada, Lotus Development Canada, and IBM Canada. She also teaches digital marketing management part-time at the University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies. From Lexalytics, joining us is Seth Redmore. Seth is VP of Marketing and Product Management. He has 20 years of experience in technology, 10 years in text analytics, and has held a number of executive roles at both hardware and software companies, including co-founding Netiverse, which was bought by Cisco, Cisco Systems in 2000. At Cisco, Seth built Cisco's internal text analytics solution for reputation management, which uses Lexalytics software engine at its core. Uh, Seth's handle on Twitter is S. Redmore, if you want to follow him there. And from SAS, we have Global Marketing, Global Product Marketing Manager, Fiona McNeil. Fiona currently oversees product marketing for SAS text analytics, data management, and enterprise decision management. During her 15 years at SAS, she has defined product strategy, forged corporate partnerships, and helped organizations derive tangible benefits from their strategic use of SAS technology, receiving multiple innovation awards around, along the way. So welcome to all of our speakers today. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Fern Helper with TDWI to uh, talk to us about the checklist report and get us started. Fern. Thanks, Linda. Hello and good day, everyone. Um, as Linda mentioned, today's panel is about TDWI's recently released checklist report on text analytics. And Linda talked about how you can download that. Um, there's the link also on the slide about um, where it is, and it's also featured on our home page, so you can get to it there as well. The checklist um, focuses on helping users get started with text analytics, and today we're going to hear from a panel of representatives from companies that sponsored the report. So here's what we're going to do. I'll first give a brief introduction to text analytics, just to set the stage you know, and tell you what text analytics is and how you you know, what's extracted with text analytics and how it can be used, just for those of you that may not be that familiar with the technology. We're going to spend the bulk of our time 
addressing three groups of questions around text analytics, and, and these are reflected in the checklist report. First is going to be around kicking off text analytics projects. The second, which we'll spend most of our time on, is about how to approach text for analysis, you know, the actual here's how you do it, which I think a lot of people are interested in. And then we'll um, talk about some technical considerations and move into audience question and answer. Okay, so what exactly is text analytics? I define text analytics as the process of analyzing unstructured text, extracting relevant information from it, and transforming it into structured information that then can be leveraged in various ways. And I'll show you and I'll talk about the, the types of structured information in a minute. And you'll also, the, the panelists will talk about that in more detail. And in general, text analytic solutions actually use a combination of statistical and natural language processing to extract information from this unstructured data. And natural language processing is a very broad and complex field which has developed over the last 10 to 20 years. And the goals are really to derive meaning from text. So NLP processing generally makes use of linguistic concepts like grammatical structures and parts of speech. You know, remember sentence diagramming when you were, you know, back in grammar school. It also includes determining who did what to whom, when, where, how, and why. So you might be sitting there now thinking about that this sounds complicated, but it's not, and that's what the panelists will talk about. And you might also be saying, well, what's extracted? And, you know, where is this text coming from? Well, the text comes from everywhere. It's coming at you from so many different sources. You know, there are tweets and emails and internal documents and call center notes and claims forms, if, and the list just goes on. And the idea that, val that text is valuable data that needs to be utilized in analysis is certainly not new. But the widespread awareness of text as data for analytics has been percolating up through the conscience of the organization probably for the last five to seven years or so. And with the advent of big data over the past few years, text has gotten a much needed bump in the recognition scale in terms of valuable data. So it's been around for a while. I mean, certainly people have been thinking about it for a long time. And you know, but it's been recently that, you know, it's really started to hit the mainstream. So what happens in text analytics? What's actually extracted? I talked about, you know, using statistical and natural language, you know, processing algorithms to run over text data, but what's actually coming out of this? What are these structured pieces of data that's coming out? Well, you can see on the top of the slide, this transform data generally is about entities, which are often called named entities. And examples of that include people's names and company names and products and geographical locations and dates and times. You know, they're generally about who, what, and where. You know, so Fern Halper is an entity. TDWI would be an entity. Then there's concepts, which are sets of words and phrases that indicate a particular idea or meaning, you know, that you're concerned about. So a concept might be business or smartphones. And generally, a particular piece of content that you might be analyzing using text analytics is only about a few concepts. Then there's themes. Themes are generally important phrases or groups of co-occurring concepts about what's being discussed. So a theme might be cloud computing. And a, a piece of content or a group of content might contain many themes. And then there's sentiments, which you've probably heard a lot about because there's been a lot of discussion in the popular press about sentiment analysis. And it generally refers to the tonality or point of view of the text. You know, so for example, if you have someone that's an unhappy customer, that would lead to a negative sentiment. And we'll talk more about that in, in the panel discussion also. So as I said, text analytics is hitting the mainstream. And it's actually being used across industries in a number of use cases. And these include marketing, business, and industry-specific analysis. And a lot of the attention on text analytics now is focused on customer-focused solutions, such as voice of the customer and churn analysis and survey analysis. And in fact, many early adopters have used text analytics to better understand customer experience. And that's probably still one of the most popular use cases. I mean, I remember back in the early 1990s when I was working at Bell Labs and we were trying to predict churn, and we could do it using the structured data. But we also knew that it was the call center notes that would provide the why behind the what. 
And at that point, unfortunately, the technology wasn't there to do that sort of analysis. But even back then, we realized that it could be a real boon you know, for understanding customers. You know, it's also used in business. It's used in competitive intelligence. It's used in um, HR in sort of voice of the employee types of applications, similar to voice of the customer, but on the employee side. It's also used to help categorize documents and to determine um, records retention and for risk analysis. And it's also used in industry-specific um, ways, like fraud detection and e-discovery. And even things you know, moving out of sort of corporate business into you know, medical types of applications you know, where people are looking at what are the predictors of certain diseases and that sort of thing. And text analytics can aid in discovery as well as improve the list of, of analytical models. And you know, that's going to result in top and bottom line impact. So my last slide here before we get to the panel discussion is just to talk about the growth of text analytics. And these are some numbers from a quick survey that TDWI did on emerging technologies um, earlier this year. And you can see across the horizontal axis, there's five different groups of technologies, advanced data visualization, big data analytics, predictive analytics, social media analytics, and text analytics. And in this survey, about 20% of the respondents were already using text analytics technology. You can see that in the blue. And the number was expected to rise to about 50% in the next three years if the users kept to their plans. And interestingly now, I'm in the middle of writing the best practices report for predictive analytics. that will be out later this year. And I'm asking a number of questions about text analytics. And I'm seeing text analytics gaining momentum, even in the predictive realm, too. You know, the survey results are suggesting that companies are going to start to incorporate even more text data for use in analytics and predictive analytics, so confirming what was seen in this quick survey. In fact, 31% of the companies using predictive analytics that we surveyed are now reporting to use internal text data today, and that percent is expected to double over the next three years if users keep to their plans. So the message here is that companies realize the value of text and text analytics, and they see it as an important new source of data. Okay, with that, let's start talking about kicking off text analytics. You can see we have three questions here. I'm going to ask each of our panelists um, one of them. The first question is, what are you seeing in the way of adoption of text analytics among your client, client base? And what about the business case requirements? Michelle, do you want to take that one? Sure, Fern. Um, and it pretty well aligns with some of the data points in the, the survey research that you identified. We're really seeing two main large segments of adoption of text, one from a more new and growing segment of analytics users, as well as from traditional users of advanced analytics. So first off, with respect to the traditional users of advanced analytics, including predictive analytics, um, these users are really looking to expand their access to different data types and sources for analysis. And that's because the value of predictive analysis really grows exponentially with additional input sources. And so adding text-based data sources improves insights and model accuracy. Um, so these analytical shops are really merging as well their text data with their proprietary structured data to improve analytical insights as well as model accuracy. So second, secondarily, we're also seeing text analytics having really great and increasing interest from organizations that are just now starting to make use of customer analytics. And these customers are really eager to explore and understand text-based data for customer feedback, such as from social media sources. Uh, if we look to common use cases, we're really seeing a lot of customer marketing analytics most definitely on the rise. Uh, after all, relying on structured data for customer insights would be naive, especially in light of the growth in access to unstructured data sources for customer feedback, like social media or customer surveys, call center records. So organizations more and more are really interested in customer feedback, and they really do need to incorporate text-based sources. And, and as you hinted at, sort of customer intelligence, customer experience initiatives are really driving quite a big share of interest in text. And interestingly enough, these initiatives are often strategic in nature. Uh, in regard to the sorry, sorry, <laughs> yeah, in regard to the second part of the question, <clears throat> what about the business case requirements? Um, so from a business case perspective, we see organizations are working through several issues, 
Uh, for instance, where tech serves a strategic or cross-functional purpose, 